So in previous videos, we already discussed how to do callbacks, but now I'm going to do a conditional callback for our tasks. Now the flow of this, if you wanted to break it down on what this feature is going to do, is it's going to look at a task every time it's saved, and it's going to check to see if it has been completed, and if it has, then it's going to update the, uh, the count for our percent complete in the project that it belongs to. So I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to say after underscore save. And so this is going to work for both new tasks. So if you create a task, you mark it complete right away, it'll work for that. And it'll also work for the more common case, which is when you update a task uh, and say that it's completed. So I'm going to say after save, and I'm going to say update percent complete if mark completed. Okay, now here I'm going to create some methods. So I'm gonna, one of them is going to be mark completed with the question mark. And then the other one, I'm just going to create as a placeholder here, is update percent complete. So this is the method that's going to get run after save if this comes back as true. So in Ruby, uh, methods can come back as true if they, or will come back as true if they're not nil and they're not false. So all we have to check here is to say self completed is set to true. So the only way this will come back true is if the self.completed, so this instance of task, is marked as completed. If it's not, it will be returned false, and then this after save method will never even be called. So that's how you do that. Now this next part is going to get a little bit longer because there has to be some logic associated with this, and it's a mini algorithm. So I'm going to say project. And this is going to be the way we find our project. So I'm going to say project find self dot project underscore ID. So this is a database query. It looks to see through the project table and it finds whatever project or whatever project that task is associated with. Okay, so that's finding the project and it's going to store it in a local variable. Now I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to say count of completed tasks and this is going to be equal to project dot tasks so it's going to find all the tasks associated with this specific project completed count okay oh and you know what I just realized I need to uh, this completed has to uh, grab a count of all the tasks. So I need to add a scope in here. So up at the top here, I'm going to say scope completed and pass in a stabby lambda. That is what it's called. Uh, and say where completed is true. Okay, so that's going to let us here uh, call this completed method. Please don't get this confused with this uh, because look right here we're calling completed on tasks as an array uh, and typically obviously you wouldn't be able to do that so what it's doing it's looking up this project that's associated with the tasks it's finding all the tasks associated with it that are completed so where completed is set to true, and then it's counting them. So this is just returning the count. It does exactly what the variable says. And then we want the count of total tasks. So this one is going to be project.tasks.count. And lastly, this is a cool thing because we're going to actually call that class, if you remember back a few videos ago, remember this counter class? We're actually going to be able to call that here. And so I can show you how that can be functional. So project.update, and then I want to update the percent 
complete value with the counter call. And if you remember this counter call right here, uh, it has a instance uh, method that takes in a few different parameters. So the instance method, if you remember, is calculate, let me help if I spelled it right, percent complete, and then it passes in the count of completed, and then the count of total. Of total. Okay, and up top here, I'm going to do a word wrap so that you can see all that. Okay, that's easier to read. Okay, to review, this is a lot, so uh, and I'm not even sure if this will work perfectly the first time, so we'll uh, take it through its paces, though. Uh, okay, so just to review, we have a callback here. This callback is only gonna happen if a task has been marked as complete and then it's going to run through and uh, update the percent complete value for that specific project. So we don't have any interface to do this in, so we're gonna have to do it in the console first. Uh, clear this and start it here. So we'll first get our values. So I'm gonna grab a project and store it in a variable. Okay, so we have our uh, project with ID 21, and we can see this one already has tasks, which is good. So if we look at the project and we see the percent complete, uh, and we have to call it a uh, a method on this because if you look up top percent complete sends a big decimal value which is hard to read and so you can see if you call to string on this it'll give us 0.0, .0 which is the value so to test out to see if what we did works we know that task dot last has a ID of project ID of 21 so if theoretically if everything we what we did works if I update this last task, then it should update the value of percent complete here. Okay, so I'm going to say project last uh, update, and I want to change completed from nil, and I want to change that to true. Okay. Okay, that looked like it works. Now let's go to project last dot percent complete if this works this should now be at um, this should be at 50 percent and there you go it looks it all worked so that's awesome so that is all working and uh, let's see if when we make an update if it has the same effect so I'm gonna go here and uh, actually yeah, I want to do a task so I want to do task dot last update and change it from uh, nil uh, or from true to false so there and say completed and change this to false okay now let's look at project last percent complete nope two string there you go, and it's back to zero. So this is all working perfectly, which is really nice to see. So this is actually a little mini algorithm, and it's running only when an item has been marked as complete, and it's updating our project associated with task. But the cool thing is, we did all of this in the task model. We didn't even touch the project, if you notice. We didn't make any changes here. We did all of this right here, but because we're able to access this other model and communicate with it directly, because tasks belong to projects, we're able to find values, run queries, and then make updates on that project specifically based off the information we find. So if you went through that, great job. That was a more challenging lesson than some of the other ones. So uh, if you had any issues, go through it, go through the code and get familiar with it because this is something that can come in really handy as you're building out applications.